So over the course of Halo's history, we've always wondered how many Easter eggs are there truly across all of the Halo games? Surely there's a lot, and we've thought about it for quite some time, and then we started wondering what would the process of trying to catalog all of the Easter eggs that are in the game, or really clever homages, even look like? If we did a video, would we stop at 100, 200? I got to thinking, what if we just went straight for a thousand Halo Easter eggs? Almost treat it like a research challenge, see if we could actually come up with a thousand easter eggs. If we could find around 111 or so easter eggs per game, maybe, just maybe, we could actually get a full list of 1,000 Halo easter eggs put together in a video, and it was a bit challenging because some games have significantly less than 100 Halo easter eggs, but nonetheless we're still optimistic because between all of the collectibles that exist in the Halo universe, whether it's secret audio logs or clever developer homages, we thought maybe we could put together a list and just see how close to a thousand we could get. And fortunately for us, this video is sponsored by Vite Ramen. We couldn't be more excited because Vite Ramen is healthy, it's easy to store, and it only takes three minutes to prepare. Not only does it have the protein, nutrients, and fiber you need so that it's so easy to eat healthy, it's almost like cheating, but the quality and the flavor of the ramen noodles are honestly next level. It's like restaurant quality noodles that are still cheaper than ordering food on DoorDash or Uber Eats. Also, the guys over at Vite Ramen hooked us up with our own referral link. So if you guys buy ramen, using our link down below, not only are you getting really tasty ramen, but you're also supporting Rocket Sloth directly so we can make more content like this and the other content that we've been putting out. Also, when you order through our link, you get access to exclusive bundles that come with free chopsticks, a free hooked ramen spoon, and two high quality vinyl stickers on top of your Vite Ramen noodles. And with code Rocket Sloth, you save an additional 10% at checkout. And the guys over at Vite Ramen are actually really big Halo fans. They're even Onyx rank in matchmaking. And we're not implying that Vite Ramen Ramen will make you better at Halo, but I mean, look, they're Onyx. So to start things off, we wanted to look at the first Halo game, Halo Combat Evolve. Right away on Pillar of Autumn, there's the Hello My Name Keys Easter egg, which is Keys name tag just being really weirdly formatted. There's this poster on the bulletin board looking for a lost cat named Jonesy, which is a reference to the Aliens movie franchise. On every single Scorpion, you can find the number 030569, which is the birthday of Marcus Leto, who was a lead designer at Bungie. Also, MRL is written on the bottom of Master Chief's shoes, which is a reference to Marcus Leto as well. There's this random marine just out of bounds on Guilty Spark, which is likely a placeholder for the model in the cutscene that you get midway through the level. There's a special legendary ending in Combat Evolved where the Elite and Sergeant Johnson hug, and it's strictly platonic. The Meg Easter egg is really cool, where on legendary difficulty, if you're playing solo and you betray keys, a bunch of marines that are invincible will run out and try to kill Master Chief, but if you can get into that back room that is now open on Legendary difficulty, you can see Meg spelled out on the ceiling. The music track Siege of Madrigal is a hidden music track that has appeared in multiple Bungie titles over the years, and it also has an appearance in Halo Combat Evolved in the level Assault on the Control Room right up here. In the original version of the game, there was a menu select screen that had descriptions of parts of the Spartan armor. Some of the texts are Easter eggs and references. For example, one part says, Sometimes I give myself the creeps. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me, which is a line from the Green Day song Basket Case. There's also this line, hydraulic suspension with thigh pads with cool Kevlar crap. There's this line, which is all your base are belong to us, which is obviously a reference to potentially one of the oldest memes on the internet. There's two Japanese letters on the Combat Evolved pistol. These can only be seen with a sniper. The first one is this, which can be translated to the number seven. Then there's this one, which is meaning strength or power, which is clever considering how powerful the Halo CE pistol is. Also, while we're at it and we're flying through this list, I just want to say Halopedia is an amazing website. So thank you to the Halopedia community for all of their hard work documenting a ton of these Easter eggs because it did help in finding some of these Easter eggs that we wanted to talk about in this video. Sergeant Johnson is actually inspired by the character Sergeant Apone from Aliens, and at the beginning of Truth and Reconciliation, Sergeant Johnson says the line, the core ain't paying us by the hour, which is 
is a reference to, once again, Sergeant Opone from Aliens. In the 343 Guilty Spark cutscene where Master Chief puts the chip in his helmet, it has the words, do not eat, written on it. And on the Maw, we can find the text Rex written in blood on the wall close to where this big jump is. There's also a thirsty grunt at the shortcut in the Warthog run where he says the line, good thing that food nipples waiting for me at the starship because man, have I worked up a big grunty thirst. On Assault on the Control Room, if you get back in the Pelican and fly to the end, you can find three dead grunts down here. And of course, Captain Keys's pipe is just chilling here on the level keys. The shotgun shells in Combat Evolved have this little hippo on it. And if you name a profile in the original Combat Evolved, Dot Fortune, there's multiple lines that can get triggered. First one is all of your hard work will pay off. There are a few other interesting ones like everything lies in silence. If anything just cannot go wrong, it will anyways, which is the first of Murphy's Laws. Nature always sides with the hidden flaw, another part of Murphy's Law, and never wear your best pants when fighting for freedom. Rest is good, but idleness is its brother. Smile when you're ready. You cannot fall off the floor, which is another Murphy's Law, and your luck is about to change. I like beans, which is a rarer one that can pop up. DMM 2003 is an Easter egg exclusive to the PC version of Halo Combat Evolved, where on the multiplayer map Timberland, you can see this spelled outside the map, which stands for David M. Mert, who worked on the port at Gearbox in 2003 when the game came to PC. Halo Combat Evolved on MCC used to have two skins that were references to Jurassic Park Clever Girl, which looked like that red and gray Jeep from the movie. And the description reads, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, both the name of the skin and the description, obviously playing homage to the real mirror, but also the scene from the movie. There's also the Park Ranger that looked like the green yellow Jeep with the description spared no expenses, a quote from the movie, though both skins have been altered since. Rarely in combat evolved or when you have the I would have been your daddy skull on in Halo 3, some of the grunts will say we are the champions, which is the name of the song by Queen. In the game's files, there's a texture for one of the contractor developer's girlfriend who almost had a shrine in the multiplayer level boarding action, though this was cut from the final release of the game. However, people who have alpha builds of the game have been able to access the room and it's interesting to say the least. We did a whole video on that and apparently the developer saw our video who did that and apparently they're married all these years later, if that was in fact the actual developer. The Combat Evolved map Jephyrophobia is named that because of the term fear of bridges, which is Jephyrophobia and the whole level is a giant bridge. One of our favorite lines of grunts just yelling random stuff, which came very commonplace throughout the Halo universe, is when the grunt yells, feet don't fail me now. Also, Combat Evolved Anniversary added terminals to Halo CE, which you can find here, 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 and here. There's also 13 skulls that can be found in Combat Evolved Anniversary, found here, 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 and here. So at this point in our search, we're up to 61 Easter eggs so far, and we're already done with Combat Evolved, but hopefully things can pick up when we get into some of these other Halo games. With Halo 2, Sergeant Johnson would say, would it help if I said please if you wait long enough in the armory section? Also, Sergeant Johnson does get asked how he made it off of the Halo ring. He says it's classified, which is a reference not only to the Combat Evolved ending on Legendary Difficulty, but also the books that kind of allude to how Sergeant Johnson survived. Also on Armory, you can find Johnson's cigar underneath the trash can to the left of the second lift, still smoking. There is an Easter egg of the return of Meg on Cairo Station, which can only be activated on Legendary Difficulty with the Thunderstorm skull on, and you have to beat the whole level without getting hit by a single bullet. Now you can do last checkpoints, it's not that bad. If you make it through the entire level, a special voice line will come over the intercom saying paging Meg, and you get an achievement in MCC if you do this. Also, there's a ton of different outskirts announcements that can play at the beginning section of this level. There's also the secret energy sword on outskirts, and there's the secret Rex text right next to it. On Metropolis, there's these hidden jackal sketches and this hoot writing. There's also a reference to environment artist Paul Russell on the level Metropolis as well, and the soccer ball that's up in this building. Jason Jones has his initials on the wall here. On the level The Oracle, the first level of Halo 2 where you encounter the flood, one of the grunts will say, me have a bad feeling about this, and this is kind of a clever homage to Private Mendoza's words in Combat Evolved 
resolved when we see them first encounter the flood. Then right afterwards, another grunt says you always have bad feelings, which is similar to Johnson's response to Mendoza. In Quarantine Zone, if you zoom in on the planet that's in the sky, you can see that there's an image of 343 Guilty Spark on it. 343 added a Skull Prophet's birthday party, which just makes Killing Regret all that much better. On The Great Journey, there's a secret heretic banshee that you can get access to, and there's also another Rex secret on The Great Journey as well. We also see half naked guy, also known as Jason Jones, in the legendary Gravemind cutscene, and multiplayer has some other little nods as well, like on Coagulation, you can see that Sid was here. There's this mysterious bloody marine on Cairo Station that to this day some fans don't fully know what his story is, but there's definitely speculation about him. And of course, there's the secret scarab skull on Metropolis way up at the top of the map that you have to do some glitches to get up to. There's an achievement for fighting alongside the legendary Chips Dubbo himself, which is just this enthusiastic Australian sounding marine. On Delta Halo on legendary difficulty, there's a cutscene where you can see a grunt playing with toys, but on easy difficulty, he plays with sticks and dirt. On normal difficulty, he has a plasma grenade though, and on heroic, he's playing with fire. There's also a clever high Ben Easter egg on regret, though I'm pretty sure he drowned. And that secret song Siege of Madrigal does show up once again in Halo 2's Ivory Tower by standing over here. And there's an Easter egg reference to a character named Lance O'Donnell, who's a reference to Marty O'Donnell, who had his music studio at Bungie dubbed the Ivory Tower. You can find the clever question asking why am I here over on Beaver Creek, and there's a jack-o'-lantern symbol under each scorpion tank turret. There's this secret gargoyle on backwash, and there's hippos on the wall on headlong that will give you an achievement in MCC. There's the golden warthog ad on headlong, which became this big conspiracy theory in the Halo community, and headlong's monument in the center of the map is actually an obscured image of Bungie's seventh column symbol, which is something we'll get into in a little bit in this video. On headlong, there's also no furries allowed. There's red versus blue vending machine Easter eggs on turf, and there's a few interesting assault bomb messages that change with the map during gameplay. Thus I refute thee, hold on to your butt, kiss it goodbye, and XOXO. There's these scorpion emblems, and there's a McDonald's sign on top of coagulation, allegedly. Some fans see this as a McDonald's sign. Zanzibar is known for having a ton of different signs that change at different times with different rule sets. There's a New Year's, a Bungie Day, Halloween, and Christmas Easter egg. There's the blue screen of death, Camp Froman. On the level terminal, all the phone booths have the number seven, and the terminal announcer has multiple lines where we did a whole video talking about the level terminal, which was really cool. There's an homage to the Halo CE pistol on the level tombstone, and Backwash has a message outside the map that says, it's looking a little rough out here. Tombstone also has this really cool blast soda machine, and Tombstone also has certain affinities logo as they worked on the DLC for Halo 2. On Beaver Creek, we can see a face of a developer on the moon, and apparently on Colossus, if you are on the sniper tower, the windows resemble an unhappy face. There's a secret fifth room in Foundation, and there's like eight steps just to get there. And there's Terab Industries, which is a reference to Christopher Barrett, who works at Bungie. On the level containment, you can see developer Chris Carney's face on the ring, and on Sanctuary, once again, we get that Sid was here as well. On Desolation, we can see what appears to be an Autobots symbol, and there's a monopolized achievement in MCC, which is named after speedrunner Mr. Monopoly. We can find another iconic cowardly grunt on Uprising. There's this EEE -E -E sign on Metropolis, and there was a Halo 2 Did You Know daily message that would pop up that had some really interesting things from time to time, like I am your father. Use voice masking to add at least 10 years to your voice persona, which was a feature they had back in the OG Halo 2 where you could essentially modulate your voice in the game settings. They also said BXR, yeah, it's cheating, which is interesting now because Destiny has a BR called a BXR. They also say whoosh, wanna know what would make this game more awesome, Jetpacks, which was added to the game after Halo Reach was announced, and of course before the servers shut down shortly after Reach's release. They also did this for Halo 3, Needs More Laser, no would make the game even more awesome, the laser, which is a reference to the Spartan laser. Then also there was the line, tired of obnoxious teammates or opponents? Use the handy mute feature. Oh wait, it hasn't been invented yet, which is a reference to the mute button becoming a thing in Halo 3. Can you guys imagine what Halo 2 was like before mute buttons? There was this line, Lockout, 
the pixel perfect remake of Guardian, Halo 3's spiritual successor of Blackout. There was also towards the end before the servers were shut down, this will be the last time you'll ever experience backwash online. Bummer. It was also an homage to the fact that the level had problems being used in matchmaking. You are garbage. Remember you can send hateful messages to players from the post game carnage report. Oh, there you are. SMG starts. Okay, we admit it, it was a bad idea. Title update 4 adds theater support, screenshots, and forge to Halo 2. Coming never. In the Halo 2 soundtrack, Destroyer's Invocation, if you play it backwards, there's a message, secretly audible. Also, in the reveal trailer for Halo 2, this led to the whole I Love Bees website easter egg that became a big thing. Halo 2's Collector's Edition DVD had a secret voice line of a marine telling you to press play if you waited on the beginning screen. Also, you can find a secret gallery by holding down left on your remote with hidden art by Frank O'Connor. Also, in that I Love Bees easter egg, in the Axon shipwreck, Kamal says people think time is a river that flows in one direction, but time is an ocean, which is a reference to some say time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction, but I've seen the face of time and I can tell you they are wrong. Time is an ocean in a storm, which is said by the prince in Prince of Persia. Both characters are voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, which is cool. Okay, then there's 33 hidden skulls in Halo 2. They are found here, 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 and here. That's all 33 of them. That took way longer to edit, I'm sure, than how long it took me to record it. In Halo 2 Anniversary, there's a Bloodline achievement for winning 10 multiplayer matches called Red vs. Blue. There's Blast Sodas hidden throughout the multiplayer levels found here, 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 and here. On outskirts, there's a poster for Fluke of the Narwhal, a Fist of the Unicorn cover band. There's also a Daily Bullet which is a newspaper offering exclusive coverage of the Planet Reach catastrophe. There's also another bulletin reporting new construction to expect delays and offers exclusive coverage accompanied by a pair of images from Cairo Station of all places. Then there's a poster advertising Mombasa Circus, another poster of Mombasa Times with the headline Corbulo Gone Not Forgotten and features three low resolution screenshots from Forward Unto Dawn. There's the best burger hotels in Zanzibar, Superintendent from ODST show up on various screens, and Franchbot Industries, which is a reference to Frank O'Connor, and replaced the Terab Industries that was here in the original Halo 2. There's also secret dolls hidden throughout Halo 2 Anniversary in the campaign. You can find Master Chief, the Prophet, the Arbiter, Tartarus, Cortana, the Librarian, a Rampant Cortana, and the Didact, all giving you an extra achievement for finding these. Oh, and there's also 14 terminals hidden in Halo 2 as well found here 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 and here so that wrapped up for most of the halo 2 easter eggs for our first bit of research here and all in all we were up to 206 easter eggs so still we were below the expected amount by about 15 easter eggs or so we still have more halo games to get to and maybe some halo games on average have more easter eggs that can get us a bit caught up it's gonna be interesting to see where this goes Okay, so next we're going on to Halo 3, which has some of my favorite Easter eggs of all time. Like for instance, on standoff, you can see a developer's face on the moon and you can also see another developer just chilling over here by the satellite on standoff. There's also the dancing naked guy, Jason Jones, hidden again on the last level, Halo, where if you gravity hammer jump over here or you acrophobia fly over here, you can see it over in this corner. On Sierra 117, you can actually find three monkeys. They're here, here, and a family of them here. Also in Halo 3's campaign, there's 14 hidden skulls found here, 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 and here. And that last one, interestingly enough, isn't a regular skull modifier, but in the original Halo 3, not MCC, the skull would let you carry over your weapons to the next level. Also in Crow's Nest, if you listen to these servers long enough, they sometimes beep boop to the sound of the Halo theme or something. Also, there's a couple of really unique rooster teeth Easter eggs on Crow's Nest, each one having different lines of dialogue depending on what difficulty you're on, like normal, heroic, or legendary. We also can find that the Jonesy cat is still missing after all of these years. And on Storm, you can see that this boat 
kind of resembles Master Chief's helmet. I don't know, this was something a lot of people talked about back in the day. There's also a poster inside of that boat for Pimps at Sea, which was this ongoing April Fool's joke that Bungie did way back in the day. You can find a missing poster for another developer here, and on that missing poster, it also has the number 117343. There's also seven terminals across Halo 3's campaign that you can find along the way, found here, 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 and here. There's also a secret Cortana terminal on the level Cortana. Modder Zedekins allegedly found this easter egg on the Ark, though we haven't been able to recreate this. This brute looks like he might be peeing or something here? I don't know. We have this secret Marty song that can be found on the Covenant if you fly your Hornet up here and sit here for a second. If you go on the other side, there's a secret shout out to Marty as well. If you play Halo 3's last level on Legendary Difficulty, there's secret ghosts that will spawn down here. And in general, there's a secret mongoose on all difficulties. And on Heroic Difficulty, you can take the secret chopper that spawns in there as well. And at the end of the whole Warthog Run section, there is a grunt at the end that has some pretty great dialogue. With the I would have been your daddy skull activated, some marines in Halo 3 will sometimes shout, this is Sparta, a reference to a line from the movie and popular internet meme at its time. Sometimes also with the I would have been your daddy skull on, a marine can be heard saying, they remind me of Wookiees from Star Wars after they kill a brute, which is just kind of hilarious. And once again, in Halo 3, there are a couple of songs that have some secret dialogue when you listen to the song backwards. This happens in two tracks, actually. When the Halo Mythic Map Pack and the Halo Mythic Map Pack 2 came out, they added secret skulls on the multiplayer maps that players could also go look for, and they can be found here, 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 and here. On the level Longshore, the menu will actually change depending on what year it is. On Halloween, it looks like this. Bungie Day, it looks like this. New Year's, it's this. And also on Longshore, the fish's eyes will change throughout the game, which is kind of cool. Isolation is another one of those maps that changed throughout the game where the flood will slowly spread across the grass. And on high ground, you can actually hear radio chatter through this little computer setup that they got going on. And there's also some unique music that you can hear too. Valhalla has this wall that says different things based on the time of the year, like on New Year's Day or on Earth Day, Cinco de Mayo, Bungie Day, Halloween, Veterans Day, Christmas, and on various bullet shells, it says Chief EGX on them, and shotgun shells actually say Hippo EGX. We can find this little hippo left behind on the multiplayer map Foundry, and there's this dialogue reminding people in Forge not to make structures out of fusion coils. There's this iconic elephant flipping cue where if you flipped your elephant, it would ask you how you managed to do that. And on Snowbound, you can actually find a lucky loony. It's like a dollar coin from Canada. There's the secret happy birthday Lauren Easter egg that went undiscovered for many years and a cut enemy known as the Guardian was ended up repurposed as a hologram on the multiplayer level epitaph. Also on Last Resort, the whole industry that runs this structure is named after a bunch of developers who worked on the map as well. On the back of this phone on the pit, if you punch it, you can actually see the Windows XP logo. And on the multiplayer levels, Sandbox and Blackout, if you stare up into the sky long enough, you will see a shooting star on a regular basis. You can find this warning sign on Sandbox, and as common with a lot of the Halo games, this Marine on Floodgate definitely isn't having a great day. On Halo, the little pop-up text that says, The Way the World Ends is a reference to T.S. Eliot and the Cortana letters from way back in 1999. As with every Halo game, there's a post-credits cutscene if you complete this one on Legendary difficulty, at least back in the original Halo 3 days. On the level Sand Trap, there's a little homage to Half-Life 2 in the form of a crowbar. And on Standoff, there's the Bungie logo that you can see on some of the screens. And all the way back in the Halo 3 beta, some players were able to access a glitch that let you see Master Chief's face, and they just threw a developer's face on there, which was kind of cool. The pistol in Halo 3 actually has Korean 
Korean letters on the magazine, translating to the number 7. Hayabusa is a clever homage to the game Ninja Gaiden, and the assault bomb on the top sometimes says, hold on to your butt. There's this random soccer poster that you can find on the level Foundry, and the Halo 3 announcement trailer has a hidden road sign that has a grunt on it. Also, you can find Master Chief tattoos hidden on some of the grunts' necks. We can find a blue screen of death here, and in the Master Chief collection, there's the Devastation achievement, which is named after the speedrunner Dark Devastation, and the achievement, of course, is for beating Halo 3 in under three hours. This is actually a trend that they did in MCC for each entry in the Master Chief collection, where they named achievements after the, at the time, current speedrunner record holder. The Halo 3 splatter medal is actually the symbol from the Halloween sign on Zanzibar, and Griffball is a game type that ended up originating from Rooster Teeth's Red vs. Blue. There's also a lot of achievements in Halo 3 that have references to various different things, like the Lee R. Wilson Memorial, which was named after Lee Wilson, a Bungie employee who loved sticking people, the Too Close to the Sun achievement, which comes from the Greek mythology of the story of Icarus, the achievement We're In For Some Chop is actually a reference to the movie Aliens, Light Switch Insignia for reaching the level Lieutenant in Ranked, is because the lieutenant insignia kind of looks like a light switch. And there's of course the hammer time achievement, which is pretty obvious. There's an achievement called Alas Poor Yorick, which is a reference to Hamlet, and which was where Yorick was the court jester character. And then there's the came from behind reference, which kind of crosses over to Warcraft 3, which is likely another reference to Star Wars. In Halo Wars, there's a StarCraft reference with Need a Light, there's an Age of Mythology reference with Wovwoo, and there's the Wilhelm scream featured in this game as well. Halo 3 ODST, we can see over here that Rookie has a picture of his girlfriend in this drop pod. When picking up a Spartan laser, Dutch will occasionally shout, don't anybody cross my stream, which is an obvious reference to Ghostbusters. Buck's line, look at the size of that thing, is in regard to the assault character over New Mombasa is actually a quote from Wedge and Tilly's commenting on the size of the Death Star. A little subtle Star Wars reference here. There's also these weird glyphs all over the streets of Mombasa that nobody knows what they really mean. And of course, there's those J signs that have led people on a ton of random mysteries that have maybe taken people way too long, but at least we're not those type of people. Also, the superintendent maybe tries to communicate with Buck on Teari Plaza even if he doesn't fully recognize it. There's also about 30 separate secret audio logs depicting Sadie's story, a civilian who tries to escape from New Mombasa and gets help from the superintendent, which draws allegories of Dante's Inferno, and you can find these random audio log pieces throughout Mombasa streets with direction from the superintendent, kind of leading you with these little clues as to where you can find them all. After you collect them all, there's a bonus audio log that you'll have with the security guard in Data Hive, and the cutscene when you enter the core of the Data Hive where you retrieve Virgil will actually play out differently if you have all the audio logs, which is really cool. There's a ton of Dante's Inferno allegories throughout ODST, some of the most popular ones being the fact that a character named Virgil is guiding the main character through the nine circles of hell. Data Hive is a huge representation of of some of the lower circles of hell, with some references leading even to firefight, like Chasm 10, the descent to the ninth floor, and even in the final area when you go to retrieve Virgil, the doors are littered with the number 9 on them. On Kikawani Station, there's this secret dance of Marty O'Donnell, though in the Master Chief Collection, they oddly changed it and switched it out with Frank O'Connor's Beamish character. If you play on Legendary Difficulty and get to Coastal Highway, these mongooses will spawn and have have extra rocket launchers next to them with unlimited ammo. Scattered throughout the streets of Mombasa, you can see employee ID cards with faces of Bungie employees. And if you hold your controller stick to the left during the final cutscene, you can see this monkey man just kind of chilling there. Also, I didn't notice this until way later on, but the final cutscene in Halo 3 ODST takes place on the Halo 3 multiplayer map Orbital, which is kind of cool. In this little courtyard in ODST, you can see a bunch of dead elites and a sad face of the superintendent, which is like a glyph on the wall here. At the very beginning of ODST, when you're dropping, you can actually see how this lines up directly with Halo 2 when Master Chief is chasing the Prophet of Regret into slip space. It's all happening at the same 
same time, and it's kind of cool just to see that reference from the ODST Drop Pod point of view. Keep it clean was a tagline that was used throughout the promotional period of Halo 3 ODST, and it had this huge rabbit hole ARG type thing going on on Bungie.net that was really cool during its time, which later became a catchphrase that popped up in more Halo games. When we were playing on the Master Chief Collection in full 4K with the Xbox Series X, we actually noticed we could finally read one of the newspapers on the ground that actually says a grunt adopts a baby, and it has a grunt and a baby as the headline. It's kind of cool. There's also other newspaper articles that show up like the Daily Dyer News, which also is here on Coastal. And you can find boxes of the other Bungie game Marathon on the streets of New Mombasa as well. I also did think it was funny that there's this headline on one of the newspapers about the Covenant attacking Earth, which is just interesting that the newspaper is still reporting immediately during the apocalypse. They sent it to the printing press and still delivered it out there, which is just, interesting enough. Throughout Halo Reach's campaign, there are 19 data pads, if you're playing on Legendary Difficulty, scattered throughout the entire campaign. And while they're all self-contained, they convey this interesting story of a collective group of AI known as the Assembly communicating with some human who discovered their existence. It's really an interesting read. In Halo Reach, many of the achievements are actually clever callbacks to previous Halo games and dialogue from previous Halo games. We see achievements like We're Just Getting Started, I Need a Weapon, Protocol Dictates Action, which is a Guilty Spark line, and there's a ton of other ones like No Picnic, You Flew Good, Dust and Echoes, which is still a character I don't fully understand his role. This is not a grave and the iconic Banshees fast and low, something that will always resonate in any Halo 3 player's ears years later after playing the campaign. Send me out with a bang, the soldier we needed you to be, they've always been faster, lucky me, wake up buttercup, two corpses, one grave, gods must be strong, to war, into the howling dark, your heresy will stay at your feet, if they came to hear me beg. And there's even some more obscure ones like heat in the pipe, which is a line that Buck will say if he gets a rocket launcher. Also, there's some other creative things done with some of the achievements, like the they've always been been faster achievement has this icon of a winged shoe, which is a reference to Hermes, the Greek god of traveling, merchants, and thieves. There's also references outside of just the self-referential references in Halo, like Be My Wing Time Anytime, which is a reference to Top Gun. There's a reference to Karate Kid with Yes Sensei. There's actually a decent amount of James Bond references throughout the Halo universe, like this License to Kill one, but we'll save that for another video sometime down the road. There's an achievement called A Spoonful of Blam which is to get Needler Super Combine Explosions, which is actually a reference to how Bungie kind of alluded to swearing throughout the years of Bungie making the Halo games. The achievement Return to Sender is kind of a subtle reference to Halo 2 Cairo Station's last chapter sequence. And there's some other little interesting Halo or outside of Halo acknowledgements like Tank Beats Everything, Forza in the Fall. There's an actual racing Easter egg that gets you the achievement Reach Racing. If you activate these secret switches, then you drive around in the mongoose with some buddies and race around. In MCC, there's an achievement called Keep Your Foot on the Pedro Gas, which is for getting the par times on all of the Halo Reach missions, which is a reference to the speedrunner Pedro Gas, who at the time had the world record of Halo Reach. Not all of the time, but some of the time when you're playing on New Alexandria, sometimes you will be requested help from none other than Halo 3 ODST's Buck, who needs some help being escorted. There's also a secret club called Club Herrera, where you you can activate a secret switch and you'll get some notable music with a ton of brutes and grunts just vibing out inside of the club. There's even achievement in MCC for doing this called Play Us A Sad Song Claude, which is a reference to one of the webmasters at Bungie.net back in the day. And there's also another secret switch that'll change up the song that plays, giving us another one of those classic songs that have been in every Bungie Halo game. In the elevator on New Alexandria, some of Marty's random jingles may play at different times when riding on the elevator. There's also these secret Easter eggs where you fly through these random areas and hit these 
random switches, you can actually activate this flyable pelican on New Alexandria and a flyable phantom. And this was the first time in a Halo game you were able to fly these vehicles, so it was a really big deal back then. With the I would have been your daddy skull activated on the level New Alexandria, sometimes one of the gunners on the Falcon might yell, it's like shooting swamp rats back home, which is likely a reference to the line from Luke Skywalker, who claims Starfighter combat is just like bullseyeing Womp Rats back home. A little clever homage to another major sci-fi franchise. In Halo Reach, there's a multiplayer medal called Thriller, which is awarded for infecting 15 humans in a row as a zombie without dying in an infection match, which is a reference to Michael Jackson's song Thriller. And on Halo Reach's Lone Wolf, there is a chapter name called There Will Be Another Time, which is a reference to a line spoken by Han Solo in Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. There's this massive Easter egg in the package where you essentially activate the switch while on legendary difficulty and you fight off all of these elites and you can run inside of Halsey's lab and it serves as this little museum to a ton of other Easter eggs from Bungie that was hidden in Halo Reach. For instance, you can see this computer has a reference to Red vs. Blue. There's a section on Warthog launches by Randall Glass. There's the seventh column. There's Halo.Bungie.net. There's various charity projects referenced. HFCS makes an appearance and then there's fun stuff like I like Pi from the Bungie versus the World Day in 2009. There's some Xboxes. There's some Noble Team concept art including Emil without his mask on with the text U where Noble 6 would have shown up. There's a picture of younger Marty O'Donnell and a Jason Jones picture. There's seven steps of Bungie's world domination and of course the iconic Siege of Madrigal song plays while you're in this room. There's this ODST screen. There's this don't make us kick your ass and just because this will become relevant later, you may also notice that when you have to fight off those elites or run from those elites before entering the room, there's seven of them, which we'll talk a bit more about a little later on. Also, when you're flying in Halo Reach in a saber, one of the pilots may actually occasionally say in space no one can hear you scream after destroying an enemy fighter, which is a reference to the tagline from the first Alien film. And also in Halo Reach, we see the introduction of the BXR Mining Corporation, which is a subtle nod to the button combo from Halo 2, which is now used as text for a company. That's kind of neat. Okay, also during Bungie's tenure with Halo, one of the biggest recurring Easter eggs that kept coming up were references to the number seven. Seriously, there are so many nods to the number seven throughout the Bungie era of Halo games. It's actually pretty amazing. And while we're not gonna go through every single one of them, here are some of the more interesting ones that definitely caught our eye when we we're going through Easter eggs for this video. Obviously, 343 Guilty Spark is a reference to the number seven with three plus four equals seven but also seven cubed is 343. The Bungie logo, the seventh column, which is featured in Halo and even in Destiny, obviously is a reference to the number seven with there being seven columns. Master Chief's number is 117. There's seven dead bodies on Halo at the beginning. Seven blast doors on the library. Cortana's name is seven letters long. Miranda Keys has a seven scratched into her left cheek. Insulation 05's monitor is 2401, which adds up to seven, and it's also seven to the fourth power. Gravemind speaks in heptameter, which is seven syllables long. I would have been your daddy skull on Halo 2. There's a one in seven chance that you'll get it to spawn. Also, on that same level, after you get the skull, you had to fight seven waves of elite ultras with seven elites in the seventh wave after getting the I would have been your daddy skull. At the end credits, the letter T is replaced with the number seven. On the map terminal, all the phone booths are numbered seven. And on the level Zanzibar, the Xbox clock must be set to 707 on July 7th to see Ling Ling's head. July 7th is notoriously Bungie Day. And on the level arrival on Halo 3, Master Chief's arm isn't seen until exactly 77 seconds into the cutscene, which is also 1 minute and 17 seconds. Halo 3 has seven terminals. UNSC Forward Unto Dawn has a seven on the front. There are seven grave mine moments in the level Cortana. The secret golf club in Halo 3 is called the Seven Wood. There were seven Vidmaster achievements. There was the seven on seven Halo achievement. In I Love Bees, players had to activate 777 accents before voice actor Melissa joined the game officially. Also in I Love Bees, when Kamal answers the phone, he had seven unanswered voicemails. Also in I Love Bees, when Hero gives Kamal the dating book, he recommends 
recommends chapter 7. Margaret had been beekeeping for 7 years, and Margaret's email was ladyb777 at hotmail.com. In I Love Bees, Durga analyzes Jersey's food buying habits from the previous 7 months, and in ODST, 10 seconds into the trailer, there are 7 drop pods burning up in the sky. In the ODST trailer for Keep It Clean, there are 7 different superintendent cameras, along with 7 brutes on patrol, and the soundtrack that plays is 77 seconds long, or a minute and 17 seconds. The ODST superintendent will change his face 7 different times during the trailer. In ODST, there are 7 main characters, and Rookie was enlisted on July 7th, 2547. In ODST, on the ending in Coastal Highway, there are 7 Covenant cruisers above New Mombasa, and in ODST's legendary cutscene, there are 7 engineers looking down at the Forerunner structure. There's also Korean letters on the laser of the ODST pistol, translating to 7. In ODST Firefight, teams started with 7 lives, and in ODST Firefight, there are 7 playable characters. This number here on Kikawani Station adds up to the number 7, and the original Reach announcement trailer was 77 seconds, or 1 minute and 17 seconds long. This monument to Noble Team is actually composed of 54,439 individual points of light, also 7 times 7,777. When you started up Halo Reach, your armory defaulted to 7% completion before you started unlocking things in Reach. The achievement Keep It Clean requires you to kill 7 MOAs. George 052's Spartan Tag is a reference to the number 7, with it being 0 plus 5 plus 2 equals 7. Emile's A239 Spartan Tag is also a reference to 7, with 2 plus 3 plus 9 equaling 14, which is 7 times 2. And Carter has the same thing with A259, with his being divisible by 7. Essentially, all of those guys had name tags divisible by 7. Reach's final ending cutscene, Noble Six battles 7 elites before hiding in his cave. Also in Reach, it was common occurrence to get 777 points on the matchmaking post-game slot machine, and the jackpot for that was an additional 7,777 credits. In Halo Reach, Legendary difficulty, enemies inflict 77% more damage. Cortana was activated on November 7th, 2549, which is 117 if you look at it that way, which could be a reference to John's service number. There are a total of seven blank pages at the end of Halsey's journal. There are seven Halo rings. Also, the terms Spartan, Mjolnir, and Gungnir each have seven letters. Smart AIs such as Cortana go rampant after seven years of activation. The Forerunner Dreadnought has the dimensions of 14 by 14 by 14, which 14 is seven plus 7. Many Covenant weapons have Type 52 or Type 25 at the beginning of their official names, which 5 plus 2 equals 7, or 2 plus 5 equals 7. When a spike grenade detonates, its spikes will stay hot for 7 seconds. The Human Covenant War started in 2525, 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5 equals 14, divided by 2 equals 7, and end 28 years later, 28 divided by 4 equals 7, and 2552. In other words, thank you to the community at Halopedia for figuring the math equations out on these. The model number on the DMR is M392, which is 3 plus 9 plus 2 equals 14, and then 14 divided by 2 equals 7. The target designator drops 7 artillery shells from orbit. The garage of the bunker where you rescued the troopers in winter contingency is garage number 7, and the price of the entire Emil armor, including Emil's firefight voice in the original Halo Reach, is 777,000 credits. And in Halo Infinite, Doisak, the brute planet, was destroyed by 7 guardians. Not a bungee thing, but still, the number 7. Also, at the ending, when Atriox opens the room, there is a circle of seven slabs surrounding the main slab, which could be another subtle reference to Seven, and maybe Seven coming back more into the future. Okay, also present in the Bungie era of Halo games are a ton of marathon Easter eggs that have popped up in Halo over the years, with Marathon obviously being Bungie's main franchise before Halo became a thing. For instance, in Combat Evolved, the Marathon logo just shows up in a ton of places, like in the Control Room, on Assault on the Control Room, or in Two Betrayals, you can see the Marathon logo if you look at it from afar. The logo can also be seen on both sides of the Pillar of Autumn. Captain Jacob Keyes has the ship emblem of the Pillar of Autumn on his uniform. Also, Captain Keyes' pipe has the Marathon logo on the very tip end of it. Guilty Spark has the Marathon symbol around his eye, and the center of the island that houses the cartographer is shaped like the Marathon logo as well. The Marathon logo is also on the front of the Spirit's cockpit. It's also visible on the orange part of the plasma grenade, and when you're selecting difficult 
difficulty in campaign mode, the Marathon logo is visible on the shield. After killing a Flood combat form, Private First Class Chips Dubbo in the campaign level 343 Guilty Spark may say, oh god, I recognize that one. That was Bob. This is actually a reference to Marathon's Born on Boards, which are called Bobs. Foehammer is named after the Marathon level Foehammer. The Spanker is the rocket launcher from Marathon, which is called the Spanker X18. Marathon 2 Durandal had a level named If I Had a Rocket Launcher, I'd Make Somebody Pay, and Halo Combat Evolved has a chapter called If I Had a Super Weapon dot dot dot, kind of a subtle nod to that title from Marathon. There's a Half Naked Guy achievement, which is called He's Running a Marathon. The Halo 2 level Foundation is actually a remake of the Marathon level Thunderdome, and Gemini is a remake of the Marathon level Duality. Also, the Marathon logo is in Halo 2 in some other places, like the difficulty shields having the marathon symbol once again. The logo can be seen on various doors located in campaign levels and multiplayer maps, and the Forerunner Enforcer's shields make the marathon logo symbol as well. On the multiplayer map Midship, the marathon symbol can be seen on Africa, which is best seen with a scope. And on the multiplayer level Headlong, there's a building which houses mostly human weapons, and if you look at the second floor from above, it kind of looks like the marathon logo. When viewed from above, the circuit courtyard has a small ditch where the water runs along which make up the marathon logo on the multiplayer map ivory tower in halo 3 there's a ton of different writing that can show up on this wall on july 4th there's barbecue at bob's place which is a reference to marathon in which you kill bobs or bob bq them there's the halo 3 marathon achievement which is pretty clear and there's this marathon symbol here on heretic once again the campaign difficulty shields have the marathon symbols on them and players can use it as an emblem again, the Marathon logo appears on the sides of all of the Covenant CCS class battlecruisers, and there is a distorted Marathon symbol on the table of the Shadow of Intense Bridge. Both Halo 3 and Marathon's opening levels are called Arrival. The elevators on the Covenant and the Ark have the Marathon symbol on their control panels. Traxxas Heavy Industries in Halo 3 is the name of a company featured in the Storm, and Traxxas 4 was the name of a rampant AI in Marathon. Also on the Storm, Traxxas 4 is etched into the window. The assault rifle has a marathon logo on its butt plate, and the battle rifle has the marathon logo on its optical sight. The Forerunner monitors, including the one located on the ceiling on the multiplayer map Cold Storage, have the marathon logo in their eyes, and the security helmet is a multiplayer helmet that resembles the helmet of the main character of Marathon, who works in security and wears the helmet resembling this, and the marathon symbols also on the forehead. And the yellow hologram on the multiplayer map Epitaph has a marathon logo on the circular part. And in the center of the multiplayer map Guardian, when viewed from above, it resembles the Marathon logo. The body bags in Halo 3 have the Marathon logo imprinted on it. At the very start of Halo 3 ODST's Uplift Reserve, the Marathon logo can be found. And before entering the elevator in the campaign level Coastal Highway, if one jumps above the circular structure near the door, it does make a shape that resembles the Marathon symbol. Also, the Marathon symbol is visible on Dares, Johnson's, and Rookie's backpacks. Reach had a few less Marathon symbols hidden in there, but there still is the Marathon logo, which can be found on the seat of the Wraith's plasma cannon turret, and on rare occasions, enemy NPCs known as Bobs may be encountered by the player, which is once again a reference to the Marathon series with the Born on Board titles. There's one of these that could be found on every level found here, 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 here and also here. And since Bungie's departure from Halo, this symbol is still existent in the Halo franchise moving forward, though it has been somewhat visually retconned and rebranded as the Reclaimer symbol, though it still clearly resembles that original Marathon logo. At this point, we've gone through 600 or so different Easter eggs, and we're moving on to the 343 era of Halo with Combat Evolved Anniversary. In CEA, you can see Spartan 2 Linda on the screens on the Pillar of Autumn. A troll face can be found on the bulletin board after Keys gives you the pistol. There is also a poster for the band Fist of the Unicorn found on that board. There's this updated vending machine here, and in the 
Halo Reach Combat Evolved Anniversary Multiplayer Pack. There's Hidden GRD Dolls, which was a helmet that never made its way into Halo Reach until MCC, that are secretly hidden on all of the multiplayer maps, which can be found here, 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 and here. There's seven of them. In Halo 4, you can actually find the legendary edition of the game floating around here in space. There's a double rainbow again on Reclaimer. Conan O'Brien makes a cameo appearance in Halo 4 on Shutdown as one of the guards. There's a mech control inversion easter egg here, which jokes about mech games having weird inverted controls. You can also find some dancing grunts on the campaign level composer, and Holograms will actually teabag if you use it close to a dead body. Also, in Halo 4, there are hidden terminals found here, 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 and here. And there's 10 red versus blue Easter eggs throughout the Halo 4 Spartan Ops, which can be activated by shooting a radio found here, 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 and here. Also, there's 24 hidden secret audio logs across all of Halo 4, and to save our editor the trauma of having having to go through and showing them all while I say here, just take my word for it that there's 24 of them throughout the campaign, and they go into various details and lore audio logs based off of various aspects of the Halo greater universe. Whether it's going into Master Chief's backstory or the origin of Cortana, there's some Didact stuff, there's some Halsey interviews, it's kind of interesting to hear all of those audio logs. Also, more recently in the Master Chief collection, there were a couple of other interesting Easter eggs. There were even some Destiny nods in some skins, and there's the golden MOAs that end up being scattered throughout Halo 3 for people to go and discover or go try to find for weekly challenges, which are kind of cool just to have a collectible hidden all these years later into Halo 3. There's weekly and daily challenges with the names Cannon Fodder, Forza Firefight, Hog Father, Montage Starter Kit, The Book Ends with the number 7, and then there's also playlists with some clever names too, like Welcome to the Jungle, named after the song, Hoofin' It, a quote from Cortana in Halo 4, and Brutal Battles, which are battles involving brutes. Pretty clever play on words. Then there's some achievements back when everyone out there was saying the word bro, like, come at me bro, but there are achievements called Brover Shield, Bros to the Close, and Bro Hammer. Also, 343 really leaned into unicorn-related Easter eggs to represent them as kind of an inside joke, similar to Bungie's 7. And for instance, in things like Halo Legends, the odd one out, it's set in the unicorn system. And there's an Easter egg on Urban that contains a picture of a unicorn. Halo 5 also has some interesting Easter eggs along the way. There's the Mongoose cart Easter egg that we actually were part of the team to discover years after Halo 5's release. There's this talking grunt that is pretty great and it can get you a skull. And there's also some other skulls hidden throughout Halo 5 found here, 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 and here. Over here you can find this soccer ball Easter egg and there are these special banshees and there's also a vending machine that gives you guns. There's also this ultra secret rig sandworm, which is pretty awesome. In Halo 5 Guardians, the Saw has an improved variant named Appetite for Destruction, whose name is a reference to the debut studio album of the same name by Guns N' Roses. Okay, then in Halo 5 Guardians, there's 117 pieces of intel. It's absolutely crazy. So there's seven on Osiris that are hidden about, and the Osiris intels go over some of Halsey's research during the Spartan Ops story, and there's actually an excerpt from Jewel Mandama's log too, and there's also a random thought of a grunt that that wants a big weapon to smash the Arbiter or something like that. On blue team, there's eight intel logs that detail an Oni research station, Argent Moon, and how everyone on its crew died in some sort of chemical accident. On Glast, there were six intel logs which detail the history of Meridian and how the humans survived the glassing and tried to rebuild what they had lost. Meridian Station's eight intel logs detail more stories about the humans that were there after the glassing of Meridian and the effects of glassing. On Unconfirmed, there's seven intel logs going over more history of Meridian, but also the discovery of a metal rock after the glassing that turned out to be a guardian that was buried in the planet that they discovered after all of that. On evacuation, we hear some stories and messages from someone that was trying to evacuate the planet. On reunion, there's seven audio logs and they're kind of all over the place. Two of them are by a grunt that thinks he's at fault 
for the demon hunting them because he doubted the great journey in his head, which is some psychological mind tricks going on there. Then there's one log of a Marine that got separated from his squad. And then there's a couple of audio logs from a Forerunner builder. On the level Swords of St. Helios, there's a couple of different intel audio that you can find here. Some of them are just talking about St. Helios proverb and other ones kind of go into some of the covenant strategies. And there's some threats to the Arbiter sprinkled in there as well. This also starts a couple of story arcs that continue on in other intel pieces found on later levels. On the Alliance, there's another mixed bag of intel audio logs here, such as talks about symbolism and glyphs within the St. Helios colonies. There's talks about the Arbiter, and there's this really bizarre yet hilarious love poem. Enemy Lines has a lot of interworkings of an uprising forming against the Arbiter, with some elites urging other elites, specifically ones that are followers of the Arbiter, to turn on him. And on Before the Storm, there are five intel pieces, which is another mixed bag. There's an elite retelling the first time that he ever saw humans. There's this grunt audio log on his findings studying humans, and there's a message to Catherine Halsey. Battle of Sinaion has six story intel pieces, which wrap up a lot of the story arcs introduced in previous intel logs. And Genesis, interestingly enough, follows an undesignated forerunner builder in one of the story arcs, and it also follows this grunt, and he has this special grunt log, and there's a couple of status logs from various marines arriving at Genesis for the first time. On the level breaking, we see the beginning of this Forerunner Builder story conclude. There's a lot going on in this one. There's a threat within the domain. There's talks about another shield planet, which is called Bastion, which is threatened but ends up being saved, and it serves as kind of a library for the librarian or something. It's really confusing, so you should definitely read up on Halopedia if you ever want more in-depth answers to a lot of these very deep lore-related things. And the last level has some intel logs as well. It has a lot of logs specifically around Around the elites and the covenant that aligned with the didac and jewel mandama and they're kind of realizing that they had failed and that this is their punishment ultimately it's kind of foreboding and eerie but still kind of cool okay there's a ton of really cool easter eggs in halo infinite that we've already covered in a more in-depth video, but we're gonna go through these ones real quick too. Over here, we can see the original Xbox. There's a space gopher symbolized here. There's the red versus blue canyon you can see on this chart. There's the lightish red AI color, reference to red versus blue. There's the stuck emblem. Is it a spider? red versus blue reference. There's Mr. Meeseek's box, which could be a Rick and Morty Easter egg. There's this arcade machine hidden back here. There's this little cave or pit that's a reference to red versus blue. There's Craig's concert and tour that you can find on top of the tower. There is this secret airstrike you can call in at the beginning of the third level. This rock looks like Craig. There's a giant sandwich hidden in this cave. These glyphs are an homage to the glyphs that haunted the Halo community back in Sand Trap all the way in the Halo 3 days. If you stand on top of this, you can hear the Halo theme. There's a secret or accidental scorpion gun on top of this giant AA gun. Weapon emblem number three has the quote, we need to vote someone off the ship, which is a interesting callback to Among Us. The Chibi Elite emblem says Wart Wart never changes, which is a reference to Fallout's War Never Changes. There is the same arcade machine from the campaign on Streets. There's these Halo novels that make the appearance on Bazaar and Streets. There is an ODST nod outside of the map as graffiti on Streets. There's Oscar the Grouch as a tagged location on Streets. We see a picture of a cat here. There is a 343 on the screen on Recharge. UNSC post on Bazaar. There's concept art here on Bazaar as well for its own level. There's a cheat code reference to Doom, which is here, where the actual code is IDDQD, but for this we see ADDQD. Still a cool Doom reference. Bazaar also has those Halo books on the shelves, and we can see some really cool Master Chief graffiti on Bazaar as well. This out of bounds screen has a reference to the Cole Protocol. Also, the battle pass in the flight has the quote, you told me there wouldn't be any cameras. The arcade machine on streets has a score of 343. On deadlock, if you stand in the Pelican, it'll say, yep, this is death by the minimap. There's a chief mural on streets and Bazaar. A screenshot from the Halo 4 campaign intro makes an appearance on one of the newspapers on Bazaar. Streets has a pigeon that has a helmet on it, which is a reference 
reference to Unit 02 from the anime Evangelion. On Live Fire, Noble Six's helmet is on multiple walls across the map. Obviously, the Live Fire building is named after Sergeant Johnson, and we see Traxxas once again on the fire extinguisher in Halo Infinite. There's a challenge called Agoge, which is complete any matches, and the Agoge were rigorous education and training programs mandated for all male Spartan citizens from the actual Spartan era. If you launch a power weapon towards you with a plasma grenade and catch it out of the air, you get a medal called Combat Evolved and it has a little CE logo. There's a Quigley medal, which is where you kill two or more enemies with a single S7 sniper round and is a reference to the Western Quigley Down Under in which the main character is this cowboy sniper dude. Now there's a ton of really interesting loading screens that are references to the Halo franchise or just to other outside references. And we'll go through some of them real quick that are our favorites. There is Into the Belly of the Beast, which is a track from the Halo 2 OST. Let's give our friends a warm welcome, which is a Keys quote from Combat Evolved. Kill the Demon, which is a quote from Truth. Forward into Dawn, which is the ship in Halo 3 and 4. You Break It, You Buy It is Black Bar's text from Delta Halo. Silent Storm is the Halo book from 2018. I Need a Weapon is from Halo 2's beginning. For a Brick, He Flew Pretty Good is a Halo 2 Sergeant Johnson quote. Now would be a very good time to leave is a Cortana quote from Pillar of Autumn. Finish the fight is a call to the tagline of Halo 3. Please don't shake the light bulb is Johnson's quote from The Great Journey. The loading screen for failure such as this no Punishment is Too Great, which is from the Heretic cutscene from Halo 2. On the loading screen, we make our own luck. It's a chief quote from Halo Legends, The Package. Send Me Out with a Bang is a quote to Johnson's death, but also the T.S. Eliot poem that has made various appearances throughout the Halo universe. Silence Fills, The Empty Grave, which is a Gravemind Halo 2 quote. There's a super meta Hey Cortana quote, which is how you access Cortana on Windows 10, which is the AI on Windows 10 that got its name from Halo. There's Like Water, I Ebb and Flow, which is a Gravemind quote. Then there's more loading screens like And So You Must Be Silenced, which is When the Arbiter Kills Truth. There's Straight Rippin, which is an esports team that have been competing since the Halo 2 days. There's Dust and Echoes, again, I still don't know who this character is. Ninja Theory, which is another Xbox Game Studios. The Light is Green, which is a track from Halo 5 Guardians OST. This one is Machine and Nerve, which is a quote from the Gravemind and Halo 2. Infiltrate a Forerunner facility, quell the heresy within is the description of the Halo 2 level Arbiter. There's a loading screen that has through rock, metal, and time, which is a Gravemind quote from the level Gravemind. Then there's other interesting loading screens that are references to other iconic pieces from Halo, like Tip of the Spear, Hang em High, Shadow of Intent, which is that Covenant ship from Floodgate. Mix things up a little, a Cortana quote from Halo 3. This one is but flesh and faith, much like the Gravemind quote earlier of the Chief. This one is in reference to the Arbiter. Clear an LZ and I'll meet you there is a quote from Keys, featured in Halo Reach. There's Killer Instinct, which is a beat-em-up game that also featured the Arbiter in it in one of the later release titles. Divine Wind, which is a Halo novel from 2021. One, cut into the heart of this infestation is one of the iconic shipmaster quotes from Halo 2. It is ready to fire on demand, which is a description of Installation 05 from Halo 2. Sir, request permission to leave the station. Halo 2's classic quote from Master Chief on Cairo Station. We trade one villain for another is what Arbiter says when the Gravemind attacks at the end of the Covenant in Halo 3. Two sticks and a rock is a Johnson quote from Halo 2. All Hail the Conquering Hero is a Halo 5 Hunt the Truth ad campaign quote. There's a loading screen, You Ever Wonder Why We're Here, which is a red versus blue reference. Another loading screen, Get Over Here from Mortal Kombat, or a reference to Mortal Kombat. A fine addition to my collection, a General Grievous quote from Star Wars. You are a bold one, another General Grievous Star Wars quote. Never Tell Me the Odds, a Han Solo Star Wars quote. This is where the fun begins, an Anakin Skywalker Star Wars quote. And this loading screen, my favorite one that I caught, Young, Scrappy, and Hungry, a quote from the musical Hamilton. Okay, now we're going to do some apologies in advance for us to edit this part, but there are skulls hidden in Halo Infinite found here, 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 and here. There's also dolls hidden throughout the Halo Infinite campaign, which are found here, 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 
and here. Okay, and then we have 39 Spartan audio logs hidden throughout the campaign. We also see 28 banished audio logs, and there are also seven Forerunner archive artifacts you can find as well. Also in Halo Infinite, there's a bunch of grunt dialogue Easter eggs, like grunts making references to Halo Reach. There's this grunt that finds out Master Chief's name is John, a grunt saying, Mom said it was my turn to play the Xbox. There's a grunt talking about Craig the Brute, a grunt breaking the fourth wall and telling the player to turn the game off. There's also a grunt trying to count how many Halo games there actually are. There's a grunt that broke his Xbox controller, a grunt asking where Blue Team is, another grunt calling out Dr. Halsey directly. There's this grunt that repeats dialogue from the game Undertale. There's a grunt poem to the Master Chief. Another grunt references the Arbiter, and there's a grunt referencing the play to controller thing from Metal Gear Solid. There's also a grunt repeating the line from the Halo 3 last level secret grunt guy that's over here. There's a grunt saying I would have been your daddy. This grunt making fun of human names and it ends up being a bunch of developer names. There's this grunt talking about how his favorite sport is Griffball. A grunt having a favorite TV show. This grunt making fun of Halsey as Master Chief's mother. There's a grunt making fun of the player for not finishing the game on Legendary. And there's a grunt feeling sorry for that big green dork. There's also a dual needler grunt in one of the levels. This grunt makes fun of the Halo theme. There's a grunt that's just crying on the microphone, and there's a grunt trying some new psychological tactics to defeat the UNSC. And then there was this grunt that just ultimately wanted to be remembered as a badass. And there we have it. After all of this, 1,000 Halo Easter eggs, we were able to actually manage to pull this off. And more matter of fact, we actually went well over a thousand Easter eggs. So if you're unsure if we should have counted something or a set of things, this video actually sits closer to around 1100 Easter eggs because we're unsure as to if someone would say that doesn't count as an Easter egg and get mad after we made an hour plus long videos going over every Easter egg that we possibly could think of. So if you enjoyed this video, could you leave a like and maybe even leave a comment saying, I can't believe I watched the whole thing so we can see the chads in the comments who actually watched the whole thing and it also helps the YouTube algorithm kind of do its math and maybe make this video do really well which would be awesome for us. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribing notifications on for more videos like this. We'll catch you guys all next time with a brand new video.